How to get DaVinci Resolve to work with Linux. This is a tricky one, and I fought it for weeks before I figured it out. Um, there are a lot of variables to consider when you're trying to get DaVinci Resolve to work in your Linux environment. Um, it is especially challenging if you have an AMD video card, which I do. And it is especially challenging if you have an older AMD video card, such as the R9-290 that I'm sporting on this old, well, on this new computer. Uh, everything else is new, but the video card made the move to this machine. And uh, I just haven't seen a reason to upgrade it because that old card will run anything that I throw at it as efficiently as I need it to be run. And that includes... Uh, some hefty video editing software like DaVinci Resolve. They don't make it easy to get it going, but it is very much possible. This method works in uh, Arch. It works in Manjaro. I have done this exact thing in both of those, and it works. Something similar to this would probably work in other environments. So yeah, even if you're not on Arch, maybe kind of run through, look at the packages I'm installing and see if there's something comparable in your distribution, and I'll bet you'll be able to get it to work there too. Yeah, the tricky thing is to know what needs to be installed, what doesn't need to be installed, and and there's a little uh, configuration file manipulation we have to do for these older cards in particular. So let's get to it. Also, I'm not going to be reinstalling all of this myself because it is working now. And I don't want to break it, but I can show you how I got it working. So, first things first, there are three packages that that you'll need to install for to get an, the AMD driver working. The thing about Resolve is it will not work with the free drivers that Linux provides for AMD cards that work so well for everything else. Resolve requires the proprietary AMD driver, which... If you're not using this program, I haven't seen another reason to install it, but it's essential to, for, uh, for Resolve to work. Actually, let's, let's, uh, let's use the GUI for this just for a change of pace. There is a package called XF86 Video AMD GPU. You need this guy. Um, so yeah, install it command line or install it uh, GUI, your, your choice, but that's the first one you need. Uh, the second one is Vulcan Radian, that is Vulcan with a K, Radian, and it's right there, that is also in uh, Arch's library, so no problem finding that. And then the third one is LibVA Mesa Driver. Uh, that is something that you need as well. So, those three are huge. And any AMD card you have, you want to install those packages. Now, if you have an older card like myself, uh, we're talking about what are called the Sea Islands and the Southern Islands chipsets on your card. The Sea Islands is what I'm using. That is the R9 and R7 200 series cards from several years ago. They require us to do what I'm about to do here. Uh, also, the Southern Islands cards. Those are the HD 7700, 7800, and 7900 cards. Those will require some the extra legwork we're about to do right here. If you don't have an old card like I do, you can uh, skip ahead all the way to the part where uh, we get to the OpenCL installation. But for those of us with old cards, I want to get on record how to do that because I couldn't figure this out uh, without digging deep into the Arch Wiki and, and reading and studying. So this is how I got it to work. You have to modify this file. Slash Etsy slash make init cpio.conf. It'll look something like this. You don't have to go far. You're just looking for this modules line. 
And when you when you open the file by default, it'll be empty parentheses like this. You want to tell it to look at AMD GPU and Radeon, and the order is very important. So you want it to look exactly like this. Open parenthesis, AMD GPU, space, Radeon, close parenthesis. Just add those two words into this file and save it. And then you'll want to go into this directory, etsy slash modprobe, and it that directory will be empty. But for these older cards to work, we'll need to create two files and put them in there. The first one that we want to create is called amdgpu.conf. And you want to put these two lines of code in here. Now here's where it makes a difference whether you have a Southern Island or Sea Island card. So SI is Southern Islands. So if you have that HD 77, 78, 7900 card, you want to say options AMD GPU SI underscore support equals one. If you have an R9 200 series like myself, you want that to be zero. Then you want to add the second line, options AMD GPU CIK underscore support equals, and just reverse it. If you put a one in the first line, put a zero in the second line. If you put a zero in the first line, put a one on the second line. This enables support for those R9 cards. And that is all you've got to do in the amdgpu.conf file. Next, you want to do a sudo edit of the radion.conf file that you're creating and it will be two identical lines except this time they will both be zero. This is telling it not to use the radion drivers but to use the AMD GPU drivers on boot. So you want to disable both of these and that's how you do that. Once that is done you have to recompile the kernel. So to do that, you do a sudo making it CPIO dash P Linux. It might just be Linux. It might be Linux followed by a couple of numbers. If like, look, we can just do that. And it, what it tells me is that on my particular machine, Linux doesn't cut it. On my last machine, it did. So you can start there and it will tell you failed to load Linux.preset. So to find out exactly what you want, let's go into this folder and see what's here. The only preset available for me is Linux 5.4.preset. So in order to recompile my kernel, I would do that. sudo make init cpio dash p whatever preset is in this file. I'm not going to do that now because I have a working kernel and I don't want to mess it up, but yeah. Always a good idea to back up before you do that one. But yeah, you recompile that and you'll enable your kernel to use the AMD GPU drivers to see your older AMD card. Once that's done, we need to get OpenCL working. And here's the thing about OpenCL. There is a, uh, an open source version called Mesa that you may have installed on your computer already. If that's the case, you got to get rid of it because that open source package will actually conflict with the, uh, with the closed packages that DaVinci Resolve requires. So we would do something like a sudo pacman minus rns OpenCL slash Mesa. That's the package you want to get rid of. So yeah, I can just run that. It's it's not going to find it because I've already gotten rid of it. Um, but doesn't hurt to run that just to make sure that it's not there. We got a few more things to install, and these are coming from the Arch User Repository. So we'll do a yay minus s. AMD GPU dash pro dash lib gl.
I added a little S just to search for it. Um, you can see this is the one I installed. If you just do yay minus s amd gpu dash pro dash libgl, it will ask you which of these you want to install. One of them is the 64-bit driver. One of them is the 32-bit driver. You definitely want to install the 64, and the 32 is optional. I'm not bothering with it right now. Um, it looks like these are out of date at the time of this video. I'm sure somebody will recompile them and update them soon. But out of date or not, it's working for me. So that's that one, AMD GPU Pro-LibGL. Yay, minus. OpenCL AMD GPU dash Pro dash Orca. Now this is for North America. There is another package called Pro dash Pal. You will use one of these versions, either Orca or PAL. And if you're using Orca, you, again, you got your 64 and your 32-bit options here. Basically, if you're in North America, use Orca. If you're in Europe, use PAL. And if you're not sure, Google it and use whatever is the standard for your region. So we got that. And then the big one. Once all of that is, is done, Reboot your computer and make sure the video drivers load. That's a big one. If you reboot and you get sent to a black screen, start rolling back the things that we've installed because something went wrong. But uh, the two times I've done this, I have not run into a problem here. But you definitely want to reboot at this point just to reload those drivers and make sure you're running on your newly compiled kernel. All right, so that's all done. Then you want to do a yay minus s DaVinci Resolve. Again, I'm just going to do an SS to, to show what our options are here. Uh, you do a minus s will give you the option to install one of these four packages. This is the one that you want for the free version that's not in beta. So there you go, DaVinci-Resolve. That's it. Choose that from the list. It will download, it will compile, and wonder of wonders, it will actually work. So let me show you. I got it installed right here. Now I have an untitled project. I can double click into here. And we have ourselves a fully functioning, fully professional editing suite. Uh, it hasn't crashed on me yet. I haven't done a lot in it yet. There are a couple of limitations to us on Linux that I want to talk about. In the Linux environment, it does not support MP4 files. So those will need to be converted to an MOV or an MKV or some other uh, container. And another big bummer, it does not support the import of H.264 compressed files, which is what my camera produces and is really very standard stuff for, you know, amateur prosumer type cameras. Uh, it's not a professional, professional uncompressed format, which is what Resolve was built for. There is support in Windows for H.264. I believe there's support in the paid version in Linux for H.264. But in the free version, there's not, which stinks. So what that means is in order to edit a video on this, if it comes in a format that's H.264, you've got to transcode it into something else that is supported. I will paste a link. Uh, in the description, if you have FFmpeg on your computer, which you probably do, if not, it's a simple install, I'll post uh, a command that you can use to convert it to a file format that will definitely work in Resolve. The downside of that is the file that it converts it to will be much, much larger than the H.264 file that you convert it from. So you run into space limitations. If you're low on space, 
uh, that could be an issue for you. It's kind of a big drawback, and it's why it adds an extra step, and it makes it more resource-heavy than something like Caden Live, which is nowhere near as powerful as Resolve. But it's what I've been using to edit my videos up to this point, and for me, it seems to work okay. So I've got it working. I don't, I don't know the software well enough to give you a review on its performance, but that's how you get it working. So, so thanks so much for tuning in, and please like and subscribe if you see fit.